نقها الأكياس بتا تنام الدهر ويحك في غطيط بها حتى إذا مت انتبهتا فكم ذا أنت مخدوع وحتى متى لا ترعوي عنها وحتى أبا بكر دعوتك لو أجبتا إلى ما فيه حظك لو عقلتا إلى علم تكون به إماما مطاعا إن نهيت وإن أمرتا ويجلو ما بعينك من غشاها ويهديك السبيل إذا ضللتا وتحمل منه في ناديك تاجا ويكسوك الجمال إذا عريتا ينالك نفعه ما دمت حيا ويبقى ذكره لك إن ذهبتا هو العضب المهند ليس ينبو تصيب به مقاتل من أردتا وكنز لا تخاف عليه لصا خفيف الحمل يوجد حيث كنت لا نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه أمهات المؤمنين وعلى من اتبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam I'm your host Kareem Abu Zaid and this is Ask Imam Kareem live show every Sunday 12 noon uh, we have a guest uh, sometimes sometimes we ask uh, you ask your questions and we answer them inshallah and uh, if we have a guest we normally uh, choose a theme or a subject to address and as you could see from the uh, background uh, the subject of today is feminism and we will be having uh, brother Yusuf uh, Susi uh, who will uh, inshallah uh, take the lead on this discussion today in light of the Quran and the Sunnah brothers and sisters in Islam Brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created males and females. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created the men and the women. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who identified a certain rule a certain duty for each gender. للرجال نصيب مما اكتسبوا وللنساء نصيب مما اكتسبن واسألوا الله من فضله Men are entitled to their share because they earn it, even though the context of this verse in Surah An-Nisa is the concept or the context of distribution of inheritance. But the general meaning of the verse, if a woman owns something, she's entitled to that. If she earns something, she's entitled to that. وللرجال نصيب مما اكتسبوا وللنساء نصيب مما اكتسبن and also men have a share as well of what they earn so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving the man certain responsibilities certain duties certain rules and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving the women certain responsibilities certain duties certain rules 
And at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us to stick to your own individual responsibilities, duties, rules, because I created you and I know what you can handle. And he says to us in the same chapter, ولا تتمنوا ما فضل الله به بعضكم على بعض. Don't wish to have what a woman has. Don't be like a woman. <laughs> Don't be like a male if you're a female. Stick to your gender. Stick to the responsibilities and the rules. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving you certain responsibilities that a man cannot bear, handle, deliver, brothers and sisters in Islam. Unfortunately, because of culture, some of the rights of the women, of the females, were compromised. Now, came in Islam to strike that balance again. And Islam designed the equality, but not the way the West is propagating it now. Now, because of the past history, or some people do not implement Islam, brothers and sisters in Islam, in their lives, they ended up eating up the rights of the women in their Muslim communities, not in accordance with Islam, no, in accordance with their own cultural norms, societal norms, practices, man-made laws, because they abandoned Islam. Now came in the West, they equated these practices which are not Islamic, to Islam and they blamed Islam for them and now they introduced their own set of rules in order to promote feminism and they want to advance their agenda for example women should be free to wear whatever they want to wear even though these are against the practices of Islam. Even they are stepping as far as preventing women, females from wearing hijab. We know what happened in France a week ago. The people didn't like to see a Muslim female coming into their meeting with a hijab. We're not even talking about the niqab. We're talking about the hijab. How come women are praying behind men? No, they should be praying like next to men, equal to men. And on and on and on, brothers and sisters in Islam. This is what we want to address today with our guest, brother Yusuf uh, Susi. Inshallah, let's invite him in. And hopefully we'll have a productive conversation, inshallah, brothers and sisters in Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam, hayyakum Allah. Hayyakum. Can you see me? No, I can't. You need to turn your camera on, inshallah, and you're going to be just fine. I can hear you well. Listen, I'm going to be Now you are. Okay, here we have. Brother uh, Yusuf uh, Susi, uh, you're in Ohio, right, Brother Yusuf? لا 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 Minnesota, Sheikh. I I frequently visit Ohio, but uh, I live in Minnesota. Oh, he's from Minnesota. Inshallah, he's joining us live now. Uh, Brother Yusuf uh, Susi, uh, welcome to Ask Imam Karim live show, Brother uh, Yusuf. Uh, Yusuf, uh, I always let my guests. Uh, introduce themselves. Uh, do you mind uh, taking a minute to produce to introduce yourself to the uh, audience, inshallah? And do you see the screen? Uh, 
on on the broadcast on the stream I only see you yes sheikh uh, okay in the background. okay hopefully your name is spelled correct i'm sure one of my admin will notify me if your name is not spelled correct inshallah so this is yusuf susi i understand yusuf that you're originally from tunisia tunus Correct. No, nah, my father's my father's Tunisian and my mom's American. Yes. Okay, so can you please introduce yourself? Uh, yes. Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. First, Zakallah khair for having me on your show, Sheikh Karim. Uh, I, I admire welcome. your work and everything that you're doing. Uh, and you're one of the very few courageous men uh, left out there, I should say, in the Dawah field. Uh, it takes a lot of courage to do what you're doing. So I ask Allah that we follow in your footsteps. Uh, so that's just quickly to get that out of the way. Um, so I, uh, my, my father's from Tunis, my mom's American. Uh, I grew up in the States, went to school here, uh, got out of high school, kind of got a little bit thirsty for Islamic knowledge. You start learning that what you grew up with was more, as you said earlier in your intro, Sheikh Karim, that it was more cultural more than anything else. Uh, and so I studied with Sheikh Walid Idris al-Minisi. Uh, I remember our first Dawra al Saifiya was back in 2006. Uh, yeah, subhanAllah, 2006, 14 years ago, it's as if it was yesterday. Um, so from there, I studied with the Sheikh for a few years and then left on to Egypt where I finished the Quran, I studied the Arabic, the Mutun, etc. Uh, and then, alhamdulillah, I came back here and got enrolled in the university and um, graduated from the local university here with a bachelor's. And um, trying to check away in the da'wah. Yani, I'm, I'm not very good at speaking about myself or or, or the likes. Yani. That's good enough, Brother Yusuf. May Allah reward you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise your rank. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to grant you steadfastness. Uh, we need uh, to, uh, you know, cultivate uh, as Muslim Ummah, uh, youth like yourself uh, and others, we need to encourage them uh, to take on, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the rule of du'at in America, inshallah. And uh, we really uh, look into you that you will, بإذن الله تعالى لا تأخذك في الله لومة لائم أيضا, inshallah, بإذن الله تعالى. Uh, Yusuf, um, uh, you're, you're the one who, you know, subhanAllah, it's been a trending. Um, uh, I was really shocked uh, by a recent interview uh, uh, Brother Eddie uh, had with the uh, uh, Dean Show with the, uh, a lady. Uh, by, uh, she's from uh, uh, California uh, who broke to the Muslim community uh, the agenda of LBGT uh, into, uh, you know, the education system because she is a teacher by profession. And uh, subhanAllah, you came around the same time and, and you wanted to talk about the subject of fem feminism. Um, wh what are you trying to say uh, regarding the subject? What is your take? Uh, I, I, I try to present it in a way, but uh, I think uh, uh, you should let us know before we take questions uh, from the viewers, uh, what is your take on the subject and why do you think this is a threat, even though uh, the uh, non-Muslim community is talking about equality? I mean, uh, women are oppressed, women are uh, abused, women are, uh, are treated unjustly. In, in my country, in Egypt, for example, they don't give, they don't give inheritance to women. If, 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 you know, they, they eat up her inheritance. So yeah. what is wrong with the West, uh, you know, standing for the rights of these uh, weak uh, females? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wal-aqibatu lil-muttaqin, wa la'adwana illa ala al-zalimin, Allahumma yassir li amri wa shrah li sadri wa hlul uqdata min lisani yafahu qawli. Very, very good questions, I think. Uh, first, let us get right out the bat here, out the gate, that Muslim men, we have absolutely no authority in denying any right for a Muslim woman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated and granted for her. That is not up to me, it's not up to you, it's not up to anybody. That's the right of Allah that's given to her. We as Muslim men have to be on the front lines fighting for that sister to make sure that that right is guaranteed for her. That's number one. Number two, I think what happens often is, um, and I'm, I feel bad saying this and embarrassed, but it is the truth, Sheikh Karim, is that some of us men, we push women directly or indirectly to embrace 
this uh, gender equality movement simply because at the surface vahiran, it looks appealing, it looks inviting, and it looks as if it is seeking out justice. And so that's why I, uh, what this leads me to the next point is when you think of feminism, you can't help but think of gender equality. These are, they're both interlinked. If you're speaking of feminism, you have to speak about gender equality. Now, when you look at, let's let's be charitable here, Sheikh Karim. When we think of feminism, uh, we're not going to say that feminism is, um, we're going to take it at, the, at its very, very, its nicest, we're going to be charitable here. We're not going to say it's about destroying the home, although there are many feminists who want to do that. We're not going to say, we're not going to say that feminism is about destroying men, because there are many staunch feminists out there that do want to do that. They don't want to have men in this universe. So I'm, we're going to be charitable again and say, no, no, the feminism that we're talking about today is the feminism that seeks to guarantee equal rights with women, with men, forgive me, okay? And the problem I see with that, the problem I think, Sheikh Karim, that premise is flawed because when women say that all we want is equal rights with men, this assumes two things. It assumes that Muslim men have a pool of rights, that they have access to 100% of the time, but women only have so, so and so amount of time to get those, but that doesn't exist. There's no such pool where men, we have access to 100% of the time and we can just go there, but women are prevented from accessing. Number two, it gives the impression that men have access to this during certain days or all year round, but women only have certain days they can go, go, go to for those rights. This pool, Sheikh Karim, doesn't exist. In other words, we men do not have equal rights with women. So how is it that women are asking for equal rights with men? In other words, it creates a false illusion or a premise that simply does not exist. Now, am I going to say as a blanket statement that there are not things that we can do better on as a Muslim community to make sure that where rights, where we are able to fight for those rights, I would be the first one to fight for. For example, a woman's education. Why, why is it that a woman does not get educated? This is a cultural problem. This is not an Islamic problem. Aisha radiallahu anha, she was a scholar, Muslim male scholars would refer back to her. We want women to be educated. We want women to learn. We want them to seek education. There's nothing wrong with that. When it comes to even Sheikh Karim equal pay, if a woman is able to do the job, if she's able to do the job, Islam allows her that position or job. I as a Muslim have no problem saying that I will pay you as much as we pay your male counterpart in the job so long provided that you can do the same job as he does. So in terms of equal pay, there's nothing in Islam that says that a woman should get paid less simply because she's a woman or that a man should get paid more simply because he's, uh, he's a man. Just to get it out of the way. And feel free, Sheikh Karim, to stop me when you want. Now, when we think of gender equality, Allah bi nafsihi, Allah bi nafsihi, the word equality by itself, in seclusion, it's a very nice inviting word. When someone says gender equality, you think of the word istiqlaliyan kalimat al musawa, it's a nice word. It carries positive vibes, it carries positive connotations, but when you start linking it, when you attach it to gender equality, this is, I think, when we start having I, I many think, uh, I think, uh, Brother Yusuf, uh, maybe a good way to put this is, uh, can you highlight the major differences between the agenda uh, of Islam, and I'm sorry to use such a term with Islam, because uh, that's the uh, way Allah created us, and he uh, wants us to choose to uh, conduct ourselves in this manner, but I want to be equal. And the uh, feminism agenda, once it comes to female, uh, what are the, the differences, the highlights? Are they the same? Or, uh, like, can you bring out some uh, major differences uh, Islam calls for uh, versus uh, the feminism uh, movement? Oh, uh, sure. Let me just quickly elaborate on the word equality and I will get to that. So the okay. word equality, Sheikh Karim, when people think of the word equality, people give it no thought, they give it no time, they give it no reserve, they immediately, immediately embrace it. Why? Because they see the word equality. And the word equality is a good word. For example, when you think of equality, you think of equal pay. 
Who doesn't want equal pay? We all want equal pay. People think of equal housing. People think of equal protection. People think of equal opportunity. So when you think of the word equal, people are so fast to embrace it without thinking of its far-reaching implications. All right. So what you said earlier, Sheikh Karim, what is considered a right for a woman sometimes in Islam is considered an obligation upon the man. And vice versa as well. What's considered a right for me as a man, it's my right, can be considered as an, as an obligation, obligation for the, the woman. woman. What, what we're here against, against when we speak of gen gender, gender equality, Sheikh, we're, we're against the gender equality, equality or the feminism that Amina Dawood, Tab Allahu Alayha An Qareeb. This, this is, is the feminism, feminism or gender equality, equality that we are against. against. The, the feminism, feminism that. that uh, 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 Amina, Amina Dawood is pushing for, for it, and I, 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 I refrain, I usually, Sheikh, Sheikh, you know this, we, we, we are taught to refrain from late names unless it is absolutely necessary. So can you, yes. can you let us know uh, uh, who is Amina Dawood now if you brought her name? And, and, and like I said, I only brought her name just because, yeah, I mean, follow the cat, basically, in short. Amina Dawood is a, a, she calls herself a Muslim, we will accept her for face value, um, but she's she's a, an academic, she's a, an academic, a Muslim, Muslim woman, um, and she's calling, you know, for Muslim women to lead prayer, which is something that hasn't happened okay. in 15 centuries. So she's asking Muslim women, without the name, without... Yeah, you know, she's asking Muslim women to be imams, basically, the imams movement. But, but, yes, exactly. what, yes. what else she's... Uh... When Ibrahim, السلام, when he left his wife by the commandment of Allah, wahyan min Allah, what she ended up doing is instead of looking at and, and remaining completely silent and keeping her mouth closed, she figured she would have the audacity and the boldness to go above and beyond that and say that, no, Ibrahim was a deadbeat dad. Ma'ad Allah, he's not a deadbeat dad. He left Hajar Ali radiallahu anha. He left her in the barren desert by the command wa bi amrin min Allah. He did not leave her there because he wanted to leave her on section 8. So the second thing the that stands. Amina Dawood is saying that she's rebuking uh, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam for executing a clear command from Allah because Hajar, uh, Hagar asked Prophet Ibrahim, did Allah command you to do that? في حديث ابن عباس في صحيح البخاري فأوما, he did like this uh, in agreement but she's saying that's a bad husband basically. You know what's funny is this is this is what this is the women empowerment we would love to see in our sisters, not defying, not defying the ahkam of the Sharia, but instead submitting and having conviction and yaqeen. Allahu amarak. No. She, when she asked him, "Is did your Lord command you to do this?" The minute he awma bi ra'sihi. She stopped, she remained silent. She did not go on a, on a limb, but why? And this doesn't make any sense. This actually, is actually, Yusuf, she said to, to him, uh, لن يضيعنا, Then Allah will never waste us. As long as this is a command from Allah, then Allah is not going to waste us. Uh, so this is the second thing. Uh, we're just trying, to, because you brought the name, so let's just, because I don't know these people. You know, I'm, I'm living in a cave here. I'm trying to cave myself, so I'm, <laughs> you know, I focus on knowledge. Uh, so what is the third thing, major thing, that, that you disagree with Amina Dawood, for example, being a feminist uh, movement uh, leader in America? Uh, what else? Uh, does, he ha does she have any take on the hijab, for example? Does she have any what? I'm sorry? Any uh, observation uh, on the uh, dress code of the sisters, the hijab? Wallahi, I can't, the, the two things that stood out remarkably on social okay. media were these two things that stuck okay. with me, is the okay. leading of the prayer and what she said well, about Well, certainly, Allah certainly Allah. regarding uh, of the name, we, we thought that's, uh, if this is feminism, I'm sorry, uh, you know, that's totally in disagreement with, with, uh, with Islam. Uh, Brother Yusuf, we have five more minutes uh, because we want to start taking questions. Uh, we but, do, have, yeah, so if you uh, can... Uh, just cover up uh, some of the issues that you wish to uh, include in their uh, uh, presentation because we normally divide the show into half to the questions and you're going to be answering these questions, inshallah. Go ahead, Brother Yusuf. 
يا سلام اوكي طيب الشيخ in terms of uh, when it comes to uh, there are many things that are given to men that are not given to women and vice versa um, but if we focus so much on rights I'm afraid we're going to fail miserably when it comes to us uh, uh, fulfilling our obligations to others right so I'll just give a, a few examples um, the, the, the congregational prayer الصلاه في الجماعه الصلاه في الجماعه يا شيخ as you already know and others it's, it's an obligation, according to the Hanbali Madham, of course, it is an obligation, and a group of scholars said it's an obligation only upon men, not upon women, right? So we as in Islam, Sheikh, we don't call this gender discrimination. We call this gender justice. It's mandatory upon a gender or a sex. I don't like using the word gender. There's a subtle difference. It's it's something that's required for men, but not for women. When it comes to al-jumu'ah, hudur al-jumu'ah, Linisa for women, women do not have to go to the Friday prayer. She can wake up one day, you wake up and you say, uh, I don't feel like going to Jumu'ah today. For a woman in Islam, she has that right. I, but in the, same, man, I do. in the same context, uh, Brother Yusuf, we have to always say, وَلَا تَمْنَعُوا إِمَاءَ اللَّهِ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ Don't prevent the female slaves of Allah, the houses of Allah. Uh, even though it is not mandatory, but uh, like she makes that call, right? She, she, but we as men cannot say you can't go because you don't have to go, right? right? No, no, no. We're just we're just highlighting here that what's mandatory for me is not mandatory for my Muslim sister. But then again, right. yeah, it's not my position to to prevent her from seeking knowledge or from increasing her iman. But what I wanted to highlight is. I have to go to work. I have to jump through hoops and loops. I have to run the red light. I have to do U-turns. I have to probably perhaps make up hours during the weekend because the khatib took too long and he rattled on about who I should vote for and not vote for. And I have to make up that time because I didn't reach the 40 hour mark, etc. For a woman, if she doesn't feel like she, even if the sister has a store and her next door neighbor is the masjid, she is not required according to Islamic Sharia law, right? <laughs> she does not have to go to khutbat al-jumu'ah, right? So what's a right for her is an obligation upon me. And again, when we look at these differences, we don't say this is gender discrimination like they like to portray it. We say this is gender uh, 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 justice. And we say, Ala ya'lamu man khalaq, wa huwa latiful khabir. We have to accept it as it is and know that the hikmah, although we don't understand it, we have to nufawidu amrana to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Allah knows best. Allah knows what's better for me, right? Um, when it comes to uh, financial obligations, it is mandatory upon the Muslim man to financially support his wife and kids. It is not the wife's responsibility. Now I want to open up a bracket. This is not saying that we do not allow women to work. If it's a halal environment, it's a respectful environment, and there is communication between the husband and wife, he's okay with that. They spoke about that. There's mutual consultation that I don't see why he should prevent his wife, and that's between the wife and the husband. But is it mubah in Islam? It's mubah. It is permissible. But it is a man's obligation, even if the woman is, make, is making six figures a year, it's the man's job. And the man does not have the right to come in one day because the sheikh, what happens is you have some of these women out here when you tell them that sister, you have to do this for your husband. Well, who does he think he is? Well, why should I do that for him? And, and it goes on and on, right? I have yet to meet a man, ya sheikh, complain and come to me and say, Sheikh Yusuf, why is it that I have to go to work from 6 a.m. until 6 in the p.m. and my wife's at home in, ni in a nice environment, in an air-conditioned environment. I have to be out in the 30 below blizzard like you guys have in Colorado. You're, you're familiar with that kind of weather, Sheikh, right? But men are not complaining. A man can easily say, according to this why, why, why mentality, the man, why doesn't the man say, well, who the hell does she think she is. Why do I have to do all this for her? The man, he accepts. This is what I have to do. I have to accept it. Jazakallah yeah. khairan, brother Yusuf. Uh, brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, the phone uh, number is shown on the screen. 303-500-5101. Uh, please, uh, if we can limit the questions to... Uh, the subject of feminism, uh, inshallah, that would be just fine. Uh, uh, if you wish to post your question on the chat uh, section on YouTube, please limit your question to two, just two lines. Uh, if it is more than that, it's really difficult for me uh, 
I'm, I'm, I'm like directing this as I go here. I don't have people directing this. So I have to read and then make sure that the line is, is there. Uh, but uh, if you wish to have uh, also your question on uh, uh, the comment section of, uh, of YouTube, of, uh, of WhatsApp, uh, please do that as well, inshallah. Uh, brothers and sisters in Islam. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. We have a caller here. Salamu alaikum. Uh, Yusuf, are you there? Yes, yes. Okay, brothers and uh, sisters in Islam, it seems like we, we, we're live, we're back live. Uh, okay, uh, so please give us a call, 303-500-5101. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we're able to make it. Uh, we're here back live. We see everybody back. Alhamdulillah. So three, three. So brother Abdullah from New York, uh, brother Yusuf, he had a question, and that question was uh, the movement. Uh, how did it start in the U.S. and how can we protect our families from it? Sure. Uh, so, Sheikh, in terms of the movement, it, it didn't start in the U.S. It started centuries ago in Europe. Um, and this is, of course, with the loss of with 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 the values, if you will, vanish. And, and more important than that, the abuse of certain men not giving women their rights. So in other words, it's not until much later that the woman was able to inherit or was it possible for the woman to uh, 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 to, to, to own to own property? Two things that the early first feminists fought for that these rights were not given to them. However, the Muslim woman was owning property and was able to do certain thing. And she had her inheritance guaranteed, of course, by Islam 15 centuries ago. So through these oppressions, that's how it started off. It did start off as a genuine movement in terms of allowing, we just, hey, we just want our rights, right? And then it slowly but surely evolved into this monster-like figure where now today men are trash, men are useless. We have to get rid of men. The best world is the world without men. And you you hear some of our Muslim sisters picking up on this rhetoric, right? Um, so how can we protect some of our sisters? It's very easy. We, I ask me at least, I ask that my sisters ask those with experience, those with knowledge. Is the Sheikh, the problem happens here is when you embrace something, you start fighting for it, you start vouching for it, you start championing it, you start compromising your time and you're giving your, your all for this concept, it becomes very difficult for someone to come and tell you later on, this is actually not Islamic. It's very difficult for you to wean yourself from that movement because you've invested so much of your time and energy defending this movement and for someone to come and tell you you have to leave it it's not easy it's not easy that's why it is it, it's more i think for our sisters ask people with experience ask people with knowledge ask them what they think about this movement and then this goes for any ism by the way sheikh what does islam say about this sheikh i want to give you just something quickly a minute you know uh, you taught this week before i'm sure right to, to who you taught Tajweed before, I'm sure. Yeah, 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 a little bit, yeah, for a short time, yes. Sheikh, what's easier for you to get a student who never learned and for you to tell him how to pronounce it or to send that student on his own and to read it and to come back with mistakes and now you have to have him first abandon that mistake and then for him to replace that mistake with something new. It's easier for him to learn yeah, a new, right? Yeah, From compound ignorance is, is more difficult to deal with than a simple one, yes. Nah. Yeah. So this is kind of how it happens. Yep. Yeah. We have uh, uh, Caliph here, he's saying he's a little bit offensive, but I always like these brothers uh, or sisters. Uh, with the Sunnah, uh, you admit that Islam is uh, only viable tool to address any and all types of problems humanity face at large. He's basically saying that maybe Islam is not addressing the issue. Uh, I'm not sure if he is a Muslim or not, but uh, a Muslim cannot be believe that. Uh, but uh, this makes the use of feminist label completely useless. Uh, so do you think Islam, uh, of course, for us Muslims to ask this question, Brother Yusuf, uh, is not even uh, feasible. Because we believe that Islam is a complete uh, set of guidance. But he is saying maybe Islam uh, is unable to fulfill the rights of, of females. Uh, consequently, that moves uh, this move of feminism uh, 
uh, came about. How would you respond to something like that? This is an allegation. I, sure. I, I would first, I would first have, to, we have to make sure that we, our criticisms, I mean, you know, I like when a brother once said, he said, sometimes we have to criticize our own criticism. You know, because sometimes your criticism is not valid to begin with because your whole understanding, your whole, your whole tasawwur of what Islam is, is completely wrong. So in other words, imagine someone giving you lenses to see through and they're filled with dust and they're wanting you to see something very beautiful. The problem is, is not you. The problem is not the picture. The problem is the lenses that you're seeing through are completely cluttered with dust. So before you can appreciate the image that's in front of you, you have to first wipe off and clean your lenses. That And, and, and what I mean by that is that we're, we're so, uh, we have so many viruses. We're, Sheikh, we're a product of our culture. We've taken in so many things that are against Islam, but it's become a norm for us. We no longer even question because it's it's tarakum. Year after year after year, you hear slogans, uh, these things, and you all of a sudden have a completely different worldview than what Islam actually teaches in the first place. So for you to appreciate it, there has to be a lot of deconstructing on one side, destroying, demolishing, eradicating on one side, and then for us to build anew from the ground up. I think that's what's happening. Absolutely. Uh, we do have a question uh, about Amina Dawood again because you brought her name. She's saying she's the one who led that because uh, that's a questioner. Uh, is she the one who came out leading the Salah? Are you asking me? Yeah, she has some footage of her leading the Muslims in Salah, becoming an Imam of, in Salah. Yes, yes. Oh, that's it's her. All over, it's, all, it's all over the internet, yes. Okay, uh, the issue amongst the Muslim Ummah is men and women need to study the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his wives according to, the, uh, you know, and, and live in light of that. Do you agree to that? That we actually don't know, uh, you know, the model which we're supposed to adopt. Uh, that's a question, uh, you know, we, we, we lack the knowledge of, uh, of the Islamic model and that is why we're going into adopting this uh, non-Muslim feminist movement. And now we have to do that uh, compound, uh, you know, uh, ignorance regarding the subject. You agree with the questioner? Sheikh Karim, there are two extremes to this mas'ala. There are two extremes. Right. One extreme is you have men who are abusive. And I've, I've encountered these men. These men are abusive. They have an inferiority complex. They do not respect women. They do not respect a woman's opinion. And they do treat her not, I think I'm being modest when I say second class citizen. They treat her as if she's, you know, it's as if the, his wife is just one of his daughters. I see this, I see this. And this is something that you and I together, I have this fly, if you and I together, Sheikh Karim, we have to make it a point to tackle these issues. I've done a five series lecture about this, is that there are oppressive men out here, but the problem is not with the qiwama of Islam, it's the problem with the application of some of these crazy nutcase, self-inferiority complex men out here who have misunderstood qiwama in leadership. Now the other extreme, Sheikh, for us to be fair and, and have insaf here, is the other extreme is you have some sisters who are deprived completely of basic teachings of Islam and when you tell them Islam allows this for men, Islam doesn't allow this for women, they will not give you the time or date to understand or listen simply because they've already embraced wholeheartedly this concept of equality. And anytime they get something that goes against that, they're completely rejecting it without knowing its validity or its veracity or its coherence. Clear enough. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, caller. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, you're live. Go ahead, inshallah. Caller. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, caller. This is Manaima, Sister Manaima. Yes. And I agree with I would I agree with some of the brothers' comments, but I was wondering why he would say what the H allows to be to the congregation during this um, talk. So what is the age again? Uh, okay, she she had, did you understand what Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I just want to, can you okay. can just, you re, can you repeat the question because I didn't understand it. I think she was asking about my usage of the word hell. Um, hell is not a bad. I tell people because I, I said earlier when the man is frustrated because I see this all over social media. Who the hell does he think he is just because he's my husband? So this word is used often, and I come across this, so I repeated it. 
as not because that's a part of my vocab, but that's what you see online is you see a lot of this rhetoric out there. And so, but I just want to uh, clarify the word hell is not a bad word. It's a bad place to be in, but it's not a bad word. The word Jahannam. <laughs> it's a bad word. It's a bad place to be in, but it's not a bad word. Color, I didn't pick it up. I guess he's uh, he's a first class English. I'm a second class English. So I had <laughs> to pick it up. I'm sure the caller is a first class English too. So you so know, I'm just echoing. Yeah, just maybe, the, your... maybe the word the word hill is not is not very uh, you know we we we, we don't want to mention it. Uh, Brother Yusuf, uh, we do have uh, Fatima. Uh, I, I saw a question. Let me scroll back here. Yes, I as a woman, I as a woman will not uh, bend down to bend back or in front of men. Uh, I think uh, our sister is referring to. Uh, hadith Mu'ad ibn Jabal uh, رضي الله عنه uh, في سنن ابن ماجة uh, when he uh, bowed down or wanted to prostrate to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and the Prophet uh, mentioned that if I am to command somebody uh, to bow down or prostrate to someone else I would ask the wife to prostrate to her husband uh, first of all um, I want to clear the, this hadith up the Prophet didn't command the, the wives to do that. He said, if I am to do that. So uh, this is what they say. Uh, 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 so th there is no point. Uh, but uh, what about men who may command, uh, uh, want their wives to bend to them in some cultures? Uh, does Islam uh, promote that, Yusuf? Well, I sure, Your Sheikh. Yani the Prophet Sallallahu when he talked about this hadith, he's, and then when he said, he says, because of the great right that he has over her. I, as a hadith, I have to accept that. I can't play around with that hadith. I cannot manipulate it. I can't change it just to suit and appease other people living in today's sensibilities. Look, that's not my job. That hadith is what it is, and I have to accept it. Now, the problem again, Ya Sheikh, comes back to its application. There are many men, again, abusive men, who don't deserve to be married, right? So it is our job again, Ya Sheikh, Sheikh Karim, it's your job, my job, to educate men how they should honor, love, and respect their women. But the Prophet ﷺ, in terms of that hadith, that is a hadith. But it, this goes back to the culture, all right? So, and, and let me open up a quick bracket here. Sheikh, oftentimes you'll see um, certain posts that say, my husband's abusive, my husband's a dictator, my husband is, um, he's controlling. Well, when we look at the word abusive, yeah, Sheikh, what does the word abusive actually entail? What does it mean? Because when a man tells his wife, commands his wife, and again with hikmah and so forth, that he she should not leave the house like that. She should not wear perfume. That is not being a control and abusive husband. That man is a man who fears Allah and he knows that he's going to be asked about her on judgment day. So we really, يعني, we need, no, no. Uh, we have to kind of, we don't just look at these words and run away and say, oh, ma'udhu billah, he's an abusive husband. We have to look at, well, what do we mean by saying abusive? Because today, ya Sheikh, the word, the, the world we live in is a man, you know, accepts his wife as she is. She accepts him as he is. No, there are certain things that you should not accept and you should not tolerate. Okay, right? I do, and, I do have a correction here, Yusuf. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I think I misunderstood the sister's question. No, Sheikh. The sister meant, does can the sister uh, pray in front of a man so that she ends up bending in front of him? So I'm totally taken out of context. I'm really sorry, guys. I, oh. I, <laughs> so I, I think the sister... You need to take over, Sheikh. But, but, yeah, Sheikh but take I'm, I'm glad we brought it up. I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad this was the reason to, to bring it up. So what is your take on, on women praying on public? Um, or praying in a congregation where uh, they pray in front of men, for example. I think the whole idea or the whole uh, objective is is the distraction men may have when they have a woman bending in front of them. Uh, so let's cover that. The first issue is, can women pray in front of men? I'm sure the answer okay. is no. Yes. No, no, that's okay. No, no, that's okay. Uh, it depends. I think there are three possibilities that I can think of in terms of praying uh, in front of men. So if it's a woman praying in seclusion by herself and her husband is next to her, she's offering a different prayer. She can nah, do that, nah. but she cannot lead him in prayer. Um, in terms of being at the masjid, uh, uh, outside of a masjid, in terms of being at an airport, at the mall, you're somewhere. يعني this يعني تندرج تحت قاعدة فاتقوا الله ما استطعتم is to fear Allah to the best of your ability. You definitely do not want to come in front of a crowd and just start 
making prostration. You fear Allah to the best of your ability. You don't, nothing more. Uh, the fourth scenario that I cannot think of, oh, the fourth scenario, if you find yourself in a congregation and it's mixed, you probably should not be in that congregation. That's not a congregation you want to be a part of in, in terms of the mixed masjid men women and men praying together and she that's very important what you said and you have to allow me to clarify please is today when you what you just said right now ya sheikh if you put that on social media you're you're playing around with your public speaking career what you just said earlier although for you and i and people who are on the fitra i should say that's normal men are easily distracted I, I by have, women i don't have a career <laughs> <laughs> That you do, you do. I, I, um, I don't care. <laughs> no, no. Show Vishya. When we say that men are easily distracted by women, <laughs> do you know what the average Muslim is going to tell you today? Oh, that's because you men are perverts. Excuse me? No, that's because Allah said, Zuyina lin nasi hubbu shahawati minan nisa. Yeah. The first thing that Allah spoke about is made beautified to men is the beauty of women. Second is, notice how the Prophet وسلم, he says, says, There is not a fitna that's more difficult, more severe than like the fitna of women for men. Right? Now, are we gonna have, but the Prophet doesn't say in also because I love gender equality, the fitna of you know the opposite gender also. He doesn't say that because we live it. The fitna that women pose for men is real. It's not a social construct. This is tabia. This is a biological reality that we have to get. Uh, 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 Yusuf, can you hold on one second? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, alaykum wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Hamza. I'm calling from Sweden. Hamza from Sweden. MashaAllah, Hamza. What is your question, Hamza? My my question is, I want to tell you that I'm living in this country and I saw those family demands and got up to the Muslim women here and it has done, it has destroyed families. I want you guys to advise them, them yeah, and may from your hearts, inshallah. That's what I want. Jazakallah khair, Hamza. May Allah give you steadfastness. Uh, I do have a question. Uh, Jazakallah khair, Hamza. Jazakallah will, will, will give an advice here. Uh, do, do you have any other questions, Brother Hamza? A question is, uh, you know, there I saw a man that uh, Brother Daniel Hakikaju he talked about uh, that Instagram destroyed uh, his marriage, and then somebody write on uh, Twitter that uh, Subhanallah, if this woman was fighting to keep male friends uh, in Instagram and she was married to this man, nobody can marry such a man. And then there were many women who are who are, who are saying bad things about uh, this man. Yeah, let's, have Rira, yeah, let's not, let's not repeat, let's not repeat bad stuff. Just the, if you have a question, inshallah. Yeah, no other question, that's it. Jazakallah khair, barakallah fiqh, Hamza. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Yusuf, I do have Sharjil uh, uh, from London. He posted on, uh, on YouTube, uh, please give practical advice to female family members who are inclined to feminism, uh, which kind of uh, match the question of Brother Hamza from Sweden. So can you give an advice from the heart to uh, uh, female family members who may be uh, inclined to this movement, which uh, sooner or later may destroy their families? Uh, Sheikh, it's destroyed many families already. I, I met two two brothers, two brothers, and of course I don't know the ins and outs of the relationship. They they were married. And from what I could see, Zahiran, to judge from the outer appearance, they were upright brothers, and I've known them for a while. A year later, I see both of them. Ma Allahu bik? What what's your situation now? Oh, Sheikh, we got a divorce. What? Why? Yeah, feminism. Feminism was the first thing uttered from their mouth. Right? Is is this concept of feminism? And so, Sheikh. The, the, the feminist, the feminist movement. You don't realize that it's ch it's charging. It's fully charged with anti-men sentiments, whether we like to believe it or not. It's out there. Who is he to tell me what to do? No one tells me what to do. I'm independent. I can do it on my own. By the way, we men, we can't do it on our own. And I guarantee you, women will never be able to do it on their own. As species, not in one woman. We men, we're not. <laughs> I mean, this whole we can do it on our own is very funny. Yani, I've never seen a man who said we don't need women. We need each other. Stop playing. Wake up. We need each other. Right. And so the advice I give to him is, Sheikh, you know what? I don't blame the sisters. And you might be you might this might be surprising. I do you know 
I give part or most of the blame on our duhat. Do you know why? Because we're beating around the bush. We're not bringing this topic. We're not giving it its due, its necessary time. We're, we're using very implicit, ambiguous language. Kalam because, of, because of our career, Yusuf. We got to keep up our speech career. <laughs> you're right. You know what? Shit, you're right. You're right. I learned something today. You're right. You're right. <laughs> but that's, here's the thing. Sheikh, if you want to know, if you want to know who controls you, if you want to know who controls you, <laughs> Sheikh, this guy got on television and he said, and it's, it, it's resonated with me until today. He said, if you want to know who really controls you, know who are you, who you are not able to criticize. Abu Isa, Abu Isa from the Maghrib Institute, when he made just a funny remark about women, they made sure that he came out publicly and he, he apologized for it. Although he meant no, no harm, he didn't mean anything bad about it. But today, go on, go just Sheikh, just right on YouTube uh, or, or, or any, any social media site and say women are not supposed to leave the house, for example, with, with perfume. Look uh, at the criticism that you're going to get. Yusuf, we have a caller. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I have a question sure. regarding, um, I, there are some friends of my husband in his circle, uh, practicing Muslims, mashallah. However, they advise him and they say things like, uh, women should not be consulted and we men should not tell our women anything uh, because they have less intelligence. Um, things like, um, yani, like women are like second class citizens, you know, to the male. And, right. you know, what do women go? Um, how true is this in Islam? Jazakallah khairan, uh, sister. May Allah reward you. Um, I, I don't want to disclose your name or your state. Maybe your husband will come after you. So, inshallah, we'll answer the question, inshallah. Go ahead, inshallah. Can I get a take at it, Tisha? Uh, well, uh, he's basically, uh, she's basically... No, no, can I get an answer? Can oh, answer? 100%. Get... That's your okay. question. You are my guest, Yusuf. You get to answer the okay. questions. But if you uh, mess up, I will jump on you. That's all I can do. Go ahead. Shuf, well, let me give you my personal, ex my personal opinion. First, what, what, first off, a man needs to be, a man needs to have a shakhsiyah, number one. A man needs to have a strong personality. He doesn't do things because he sees his neighbors doing them. He doesn't do things because he sees his friends doing them. He does it because عنده قناعة. He has conviction that what he's doing is right and pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do I have to repeat that, Sheikh? Did it go through? Or? Yes, yes. We're, your life. Your life. They're okay, listening okay. to you. Second, second thing is... So the first uh, one the first one is he, he must have a, a, a qawama, a character. But uh, Sheikh Yusuf, this comes uh, in, in, in line or... Uh, with the financials, right? Like the, the qawama in the, in, the, in, the, in the context of making decisions on financials, if he's the sole provider, right? Yes, and, okay. and I'm going to give you, uh, yes, no, that's okay. But to say that he'll never ask his, his, his wife, this is buffoonery. This is, this, is, yani, this is foolishness for him to say that. I told my wife before we got married, you know what I said, Sheikh? I said, I have no problem asking you in the very minute, small matters of life, but please, do not throw a fit when I do not take your opinion to heart. Yeah, but 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 the take the sister is saying is, you know, her husband's friends are telling him that she's a second class citizen. This is she not acceptable. She doesn't no. have an opinion. I mean, no, that's very no. unfair. I'm sorry. I don't care about my speaking career here, but this is unfair, right? Yes. Yeah, right, well, this, this is... No, this is not Islam. This is not. I mean, the Prophet Sallallahu in his most dire moments, he consulted with Um Salama and he took ah. her advice. Can you cite the and incident? Al Can you cite the incident of Al-Hudaybiyah? That, that was a big. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. The Muslims in the most dire times, just a short summary, in the most dire times, the Prophet Sallallahu he walked out and he had the hadi with him. But the Muslims were not wanting to do what he was doing. So he walked in and, and to Um Salama in her tent and he was very, very angry. And he says, the Muslims are not obeying me. The, um Salama radiallahu anha, she command, uh, advised him. Again, she told him, commanded him. She told him, why don't you go start 
You do it firsthand and the other Muslims will follow you. Now, the prophet doesn't turn back and say, you're a woman. How dare you give me advice? Know your place. Yeah. No, look, it's a man, only a man with a huge inferiority complex. But Yusuf, uh, the, the reason why the Sahaba did not act right away because they were hoping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would abrogate that, would, would reveal something. But when they no. would see the Prophet already dealing with the situation, that means don't hope for Noah. That's it. That's what we're going to be dealing with. I do have Tawbah. Uh, uh, Qayyum Khan. Tuba Qayyum Khan. Sheikh, can a girl sit in a mixed gender gathering of cousins and play like a card game or something while being straightforward, not laughing, even if my cousins are laughing and joking? Uh, what is your take on I this? Don't I don't know how you can enjoy a game without laughing and giggling and any al bil qawl, etc. Yani first, your cousins are not a mahram. Uh, so what applies to your cousins applies to your professor, applies to your friend, your colleague in school. He's not a mahram, so you're not allowed to do that. Um, in the Prophet, when he says, وَلَا تَقْرَبُ الزِّنَا when you're sitting in front of him and he's sitting in front of you, how do we put in practice غَضُّ basar? This is what gets me when we have these mixed gatherings. How can I, re I mean, are we playing cards like this? How do you, you, it's not attainable. No, so I wouldn't I engage mean, in these gatherings. Your, your answer is fabulous, but uh, is, 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 is really very logical, is, is beautiful. Uh, but what the viewers need to realize, uh, Brother Yusuf, أَنَّ الْإِخْتِلَاطِ you see, mixing in itself is not haram in some cases, in some cases. But it was made haram, uh, uh, Tuba, Sister Tuba, or, or I don't know, Qayyum Khan, because it leads to adultery. It may lead to a bad relationship. Uh, it's a fostering environment to haram. That's why... Uh, it's haram. That's why we're not supposed to do it. Now, something which we're not supposed to do because it leads to haram, because you're preventing uh, a, a bigger haram, may be allowed if there is maslaha. Uh, I don't know what is the ruling in playing cards anyways. Where is the maslaha here, you know? So, uh, yeah, I mean, inshallah, sister, uh, uh, I wouldn't do it, uh, 100%. Uh, but Brother Yusuf giving you a very good logical answer, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. I do have Abdul Salam uh, Amu. Feminist ideas are being fostered in, on, on us all through the media and popular culture. Are there known any trusted Islamic alternatives to this youth, the ummah from these? Uh, what is the immunity, uh, Brother Yusuf? Uh, Sheikh. The immunity. Because it's like the LBGT, also feminism is like out there in, in every spot in, in, in your life. Sheikh, I want to say that for us Muslim duads, it's okay for us to say that, no, this is not a part of Islam. We have to stop getting on the bandwagon and giving everybody else the impression that, hey, we have a form of feminism too. Yeah, hey, we're along with you. We have to have the confidence to stand in the face and call these things as they are. I mean, how is it that how is it that I can sleep at night as a Muslim community, as a Muslim leader? And I know Muslims are Muslim marriages are falling apart before they even begin. How can I sleep at night knowing that my voice could help them? No one that clarify, and it's not enough, Ya Sheikh Li Iqamat al Hujjah. Sometimes it's not enough to use vague language. Sometimes we have to call these things as they are. Because if I talk about it, you talk about it, the one with the million, million followers talk. See, the problem, Ya Sheikh, is when you and I talk about it, ma relatively speaking, nakira, majhulun, ghayru But it, when 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 those with a large following, when they when they finally decide to come out of their caves and they actually want to talk about it, I think that's when we can all be on the same page because some people will not take you serious, yes, yes. They will not take me serious, yes, yes. But when they listen to someone with a million followers, they might start to think, well, maybe I'm wrong after all. Yeah, and this is what's I, not this is not I, happening, yes, yes. I remember one of these without, I don't like say name, names, uh, but I, I remember one of these huge followers you know, he was asked about many questions in a very uh, detailed, 
uh, in depth areas of Islam. But when he was asked about music, what is the ruling in music? He said, no, I can't. I don't answer these questions. Uh, because if he says it's haram, you know, uh, probably a lot of people will, uh, 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 you know, uh, turn uh, uh, their backs on him. Yeah. Sheikh Karim, one last thing. As the, the caller said earlier, we're being bombarded, Ya Sheikh, left, right, and center, through the media, through television, through Netflix. Kiev, Kiev, how is it possible for a Muslim da'i who has basically uh, devoted his whole life to lead in a community, see all of this bombardment and remain silent or speak so vaguely about it that people will think that he's talking about every other topic except the intended topic at hand? Yeah. Uh, sister Rahima is our local sister here. I think the most difficult thing about feminism is that society makes women think it's bad to serve and obey husbands, to be a woman who is a housewife. Uh, what is your take on this? I mean, uh, I mean, also, we, we don't want to be the extreme here because we know that the Prophet وسلم, used to uh, uh, serve his own family. Uh, 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 just hold your thoughts, brother Yusuf. Let me take this caller. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Yes, name, state, and question, please. Uh, Marwan Muhammad. Marwan, do you have a question? Uh, yes, okay. Yes, I mean, I mean. Uh, what, what is the, the, I mean, I, I'm pretty. A good friend of Sheikh Yusuf Sousi, and so please uh, convey this message to him. The question here is that uh, a lot of scholars nowadays uh, try to avoid these feminist questions because, uh, under the, the umbrella saying that this is a, a wisdom, and uh, that of, of trying not to to uh, kick out, you know, Muslim sisters from Islam. Well, how how much of this can we apply in these situations? Because this is very important. Because we have many people who ignore this subject altogether. And and uh, well, under 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 underneath the the, the, the the umbrella of Allah, we want to be with them. We don't want to keep all the sisters out. We want to be, be able to comprehend them. But at the same time, you know, if you open your mouth, you, you know, you you, have, you you you're, you're going to be treated like an evil person. So clear. Clear, brother Marwan. Clear. Jazakallah khair. We have Marwan Muhammad. He he knows you, brother uh, Yusuf. He said. And um, you probably heard his question, but uh, just for the sake of, but if you can please uh, equate his uh, uh, his answer with the answer of our sister, let me see. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. You are live. Uh, Sheikh Hamdi, I'll call you back, okay? Uh, I'm, I'm on, uh, on a live show here. Yeah. I'll call you back. I'll call you back. I'm live. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> That somebody was calling Sheikh Hamdi. Okay, uh, how do you answer Marwan? Then we'll deal with the uh, Sister Rahima's comment, please. Hey, uh, Doctor Marwan, I, I know him very well. May Allah reward him. He's actually the uh, the, the the founder of Ask a Muslim. Allahu uh, Akbar. Sheikh. Ask yes, a yes. website. A A M. Ask a Muslim. No, no, it's on Facebook, and I'm sure yeah, it's on Facebook. Ask a Muslim. Oh, mashallah, mashallah, great. Facebook. Yep, it's got about 2 million followers, 2 million plus followers, very I'm, active, and he's, he's the founder. That's who you were speaking of. Allah reward him, uh, Brother Marwan. I mean, I mean, Allah give you Jannah, Rabbil Alameen. Yes. As-sukut al-kulli, as-sukut al-kulli, to remain completely silent under the, 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 the premise of maslaha, a benefit, or under wisdom, we have to understand, Ya Sheikh, we don't worship wisdom, and we don't worship maslaha. The maslaha, hatani wasilatan lil-wusuli ilal haq, the maslaha. The maslaha is a means. It's a means, it's not an end. And also, wisdom is a means, is not an end. Today, for we remaining silent is going to have far-reaching, dangerous implications on the newer generation. And that's why Abdul uh, Aziz al-Tarifi says something very important. He says, you as a da'i, as a mas'ul in front of Allah, you have to speak the truth even if no one's following it, just so it is present in the conscious of people. In other words, they're aware of it. Because if you're silent again, I'm silent, you're silent, he's silent, and everybody's silent, and the Muslim, the average Muslim is already confused. What is our job again? And when Allah, behold, when Allah took the oath of the people of the book, you shall clarify it. I just, uh, just want uh, to يعني, add to what you said, Brother Yusuf, and hopefully Brother Marwan is, is listening. Um, 
that us using wisdom too much and using, um, you know, uh, look what this guy Macron uh, came up with this week. I don't know if you read uh, uh, his new policy uh, or policies to, uh, to, to defuse Islam more, to, to corner Islam more, to, uh, you know, uh, I'm telling you, uh, uh, you know, the more you compromise, the more you will be asked to compromise. Uh, yeah, and, and that's unfortunately a lot of these popular uh, million followers, speakers don't realize that uh, it's a game. You know, it's a game. And, and go ahead. Sheikh, I just, I just, uh, you just took something, Yani. By us, by us remaining quiet, and again, the Muslims are already confused, that only adds to the problem. And it makes du'at look as though, because if, Sheikh, if we were to all get in a room and speak about these problems, the ones who are not speaking about it are going to agree with you and I verbatim on each and every topic. Halal, haram, wajib, makru. We're all going to agree. So what this creates is that when you speak about it and I speak about it, it makes us look as women haters, misogynists, uh, male chauvinists, and the list goes on and on. And it's going to make them look as loving and, you know, they're all for women's rights. Yeah. No, we're all for women's rights. But... When some speak about it and some don't, that's when the created the cre the divide is created. Oh, this is a compassionate, loving imam because he never speaks about these things, and all of a sudden you're this monster and you're not for women's rights and you hate women. Why? Because you're speaking about it. La la ya sheikh. This is how it creates this false dichotomy. Alhamdulillah. Uh, alaikum. We have a caller, Yusuf. Uh, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Name, state, and question, please. <laughs> Uh, my name is Hala. I'm from Ohio. Sister Hala from Ohio. Correct. Go ahead. I think the problem with the feminism, I think our women, our women in general, got the word feminism confused with what's right and what's wrong. And a lot of these women, from what I see being a woman, we raise our girls where the husband is working basically 24 hours a day. And all they see is the TV and the school system. And they think that's because that's the way it's done, then that's right. And then the father comes home and it's like, well, don't tell me this and don't tell me that you don't have the right. I think they, I think they have the... Uh... Uh, sorry, sister, we got this... I, I, apologize. I apologize. Go ahead. Um, you think so, you're... So the... Can you say the last sentence? So because I we think, missed I that. I think that, 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 that feminism really starts also at home because the males are not like um, the gentleman was saying. Um, they are not men. You, you, exactly, right. <laughs> they, they laugh. They, right, exactly. The women becoming men and the men are becoming women. So I agree. <laughs> I I think okay. you. I so I think man, I think you hit it right on the spot, sister. Uh, we we've been messing around. The women, <laughs> uh, right, and then the women and the women really have no choice but to turn the TV or turn to their neighbor or whatever because our men are failing the women. Yeah, I think we it's don't clear. Yeah. We have uh, Sayyidina Muhammad gave the women the right. We got right. all the rights that the women are fighting for these days. Right. We already have it. Right. And uh, they're just getting things confused. And the, the, the women's problem is instead of actually sit down and discuss it with the husband or their daughter, especially, they're just. I like think. Uh, so I mean, they're just saying, I don't care. You know, I clear. Want to do it. I want to do what I want to do. Sister Hala. It's just out of anger, honestly. Sister Hala, you made it crystal. You made it crystal. Jazakallah <laughs> khairan. Yusuf, you kind of hinted to that when you uh, answered one, the sister who, uh, who mentioned her husband uh, trying to not uh, take her opinion into consideration. Uh, and I kind of interrupted you, but I think you were going that way that the man has qawama and, 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 and he should show that. Because really, I think the whole issue that Sister Hala got it is starting from home. That the man is not the man of the house, is not the head of the house, and and, be... and, 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 and 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 in the proper manner. So, not being a monster, you know, we used to have this uh, uh, movie in uh, or soap opera in Egypt. I, I remember watching it. A, a guy by the name Sisayid. You know, Sisayid when when he enters the house, everybody is panicking. Oh, the 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 lion is back. You know, 
No, we're not talking about that, but we're talking about, you know, um, having Health a issues. say on issues. Yes, Yusuf, go ahead. And, and I think that's what we're, the only thing we're asking, I, I mean, Sheikh Wallahi, this is, it's, it's, it's multi. It's a multifaceted problem. It's. I don't think it's one or two problems. It's. It's the dominant culture. It's the dominant culture. Do you know what a college student recently said to me? He says, Sheikh Yusuf, we're not taught to be men. This is a millennial. He's 27 <laughs> years old. We we're talking about wife, husband. He. T- he said it to me. He said, Sheikh Yusuf. We, we didn't grow up to be men. What we're asking for is healthy rujula. Healthy rujula is that that man will lead that family. He's going to remind them of prayer. He's going to remind them of, of, of God. The man is there and he's leading the family. We're looking for healthy rujula. I don't want my wife to fear me before walking in. I don't want my kids to fear me. I want them to be happy and joyful. Oh, dad's home, alhamdulillah. I don't want them to fear me. Oh my God, okay, everybody straighten up. I don't want that. I want them to love me, not to fear me. So, but again, for you to have that, we have to get rid of the self inferiority complex. Mm-hmm. Clear, yeah. clear, clear. Uh, I do have Ahmed Shahid. He's from France. Uh, yeah, I mean, the brother is, is basically saying, Hasbunallah wa na'mal wakil. I don't know, maybe uh, you haven't gotten uh, time because this happened just a day or two ago uh, with this Macron guy just trying to, you know, basically. Um, I think what he's trying to do is to institute uh, the uh, Muslim world system. Like, you're only going to learn the Islam that France produces for you. Uh, but the Islam in the Quran and the Sunnah, no. Uh, they basically want to do the same thing they done to Christianity. You know, they, they produced that po- Paul, uh, Pauline theology and, and replaced it with the teachings of Prophet Isa. And, and they forced it on the people they actually used. Uh, imperial power and you're probably aware of the history they want to do the same thing with islam but i tell you they will fail but subhanallah france is a place man that i i always see these guys haters of islam Uh, and subhanallah is the is you know i'm really puzzled yusuf um you know islam doesn't have that big budget to uh, do missionary work like the christian church we don't have a lot of money a lot of you know, a lot of our work is is individually, uh, individual initiatives. We don't even have an organized like the uh, the Vatican, you know. Uh, yet it is the, the the fastest growing religion in the whole world is is growing and is about to uh, you know uh, balance up with with Christianity. So the people are accepting it. Don't you guys believe in democracy? The people are liking it. It's Offering them solutions. So why do you want to stop that? Don't you guys believe in democracy, Macron guy? Or you just hate Islam? You just don't want Islam. Uh, Sheikh, my wife is from France. Um, she's she's Arab, but she's from France. And let me tell you, if you're looking, not that anybody would be enticed to do this, but if you're looking for horrible customer service, go to France. <laughs> yeah. Interesting, yeah. interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Jazakallah khair, uh, brother Yusuf. Uh, we do have uh, Rabia Khan. Uh, this is not a blame shifting, but it's a big problem in the communities. Uh, the shiuch should uh, address and talk about it. So she is really uh, seconding your uh, your take on this, uh, brother Yusuf, that uh, we should be uh, able to talk about this without... Uh, you know, fearing of losing our fans and, and, and all of this. What is the ruling on husband helping around the house, like helping with uh, uh, with dishes and stuff like that? Uh, okay. okay. That is Kaira Very... Tanzania. She's from Tanzania. So can a husband help his wife cook or would that uh, take away from his manhood? You know, I'm a man. I shouldn't be cooking. <laughs> Huh? That's that's an, that's Arabic culture, by the way. You know, if you tell a husband to cook, you know sure. this is this is a this is a, for a, an Egyptian man. This is in a way you lost, uh, you know, ninety nine point nine 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 of your manhood. Uh, but what does Islam say about this? Very good. Uh, this, I mean, some ulama will say that it is mandatory min babat zoja that a woman should cook for her husband. Okay. Number two. 
Uh, people have to stop saying that it is sunnah to cook with your wife and then they put these nice pictures and because the Prophet ﷺ, we don't have any narration that he walked in his house and he asked Aisha for ta'am and he says, لا, We don't have any narration that the Prophet ﷺ cooked. So please, you can say it's sunnah to help, but stop saying it is sunnah to cook and then you show this guy in a chef. I mean, it's okay, you can do it. it does, but, it's not going to make you less of a man let me, to let do me, it. Let me interject here, but this is associated with uh, what if she's uh, uh, earning 50 or 60 percent of the income? She goes to Very work good. too. I mean, Sheikh. she she brings in 60 percent of the income. So where is the where is the justice here? The fairness here? I'm sorry. I, I'm going to stand by my sisters here. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And I'm not done yet, Sheikh. <laughs> okay. I stand by them too. It's okay. not just you. <laughs> Go ahead. So it depends. Every relationship is different. When you have a man who's working outside and the woman is inside. I think it's logical that the man leaves at six o'clock in the morning. He comes back maybe perhaps at five, six o'clock, three, four in the afternoon. I think it's logical that the woman would be the one doing the cooking. I don't think a man, and if he does this, kudos to him. But after a long day of work, I, it's, I don't think it's the end of the world for a woman if she's a stay-at-home mother taking care of the kids. Now, if they're both working, they have to work something out that is good for them both. It's not a one. It's not a one size fits all. You guys have to agree as to what's what's ideal for your relationship or not, because every uh, family is going to be different than the family next door. But in terms terms of like yani, a man cooking or helping, it's not going to make him less of a man. But there are so many factors and variables to consider before coming to saying whether it's needed, whether it's wajib or not. What is uh, Sister uh, uh, Um Adhan is asking, what is the fundamental difference between Islam and feminism? Very good. Feminism, feminism seeks equal rights with men. And that's in every facet of life. In other words, there's not something that men do, only that women should be able to do. Islam cannot tolerate this kind, this path, because there are certain things that men can do that women cannot do, like the imama, like um, when it comes to khula, when it comes to, you know, the dari, when it comes to marrying, you know, more than... A woman can't go and say, I want equality, I'm going to marry four, you know, four husbands. As silly as that sounds, that's what equ gender equality is about. So Islam, the second aspect here is Islam has certain fixed things that nobody can change or modify. Right? You have the kulliyat are there, they're fixed, irrespective of where you live. When the sun shines and when the sun goes down, that's a must until Qiyamah Sa'a, it does not change. There are certain things that we can kind of tweak, there is nuance therein, but we have to, as Muslims, we have to separate and differentiate between what Islam deems as, يعني, as they would say in Usul al-Fiqh, uh, uh, nobody can mess around with. No. The problem with feminism today, it's constantly changing. And, 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 and it's, it's based on the whims and desires of people. I, as a Muslim, have to say, okay, does Islam acknowledge this aspect or not? If it doesn't, and, and that's why I don't think a Muslim woman should call herself a Muslim feminist because you'd be somewhat lying to yourself because feminism in essence, as we said, Sheikh, earlier, is that feminism is about seeking equal rights across the board. Women cannot have equal rights with men in Islam. The same way that men, we cannot have equal rights with women. So that's right out the door. We, that's not something we can tolerate or, or uh, attain. Uh, Kareem, that's not me, but someone, uh, he wrote something which really uh, expresses what you just said. In Islam, the woman is a woman. In feminism, a woman is a man. Would you agree? To a certain degree, yes, because today it's all of, I mean, that's why you'll see certain women, and I'm not going to lie, you look at her at first glance, Sheikh, and you think it's a man. <laughs> okay, I have, Sheikh, I have a call. Uh, let, okay, let me just take the caller and you please finish, uh, finish up that thought. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi. This is Ismail from Indiana. Okay, are you sure you want your wife to hear that, Ismail? You shouldn't have said your name, man, if you want to say something. Go ahead, I'm just kidding. Yes, first of all, we'd like to look at the case for taking the time out. This is, of course, an important topic, a really hot topic nowadays. Now, I have two questions for Sheikh. Number one is. Some of the Muslim women, as a Muslim household, uh, the women, they find this movement very appealing. Uh, so I, uh, you know, wanted to know the reason why, of course, because it's 
one was about, you know, if we have rights for the men and the women, you already explained that. So why do some of the Muslim women find this movement appealing? That's number one. Number two shift is who is in in the sight of Allah's way? Who is better, men or the women? Jazakallah khairan. Uh, Yusuf, please finish your thought regarding Karim comment regarding a woman is a woman, feminism uh, in, in a woman is a man. Just finish that thought and yeah. we'll answer this. Okay. Uh, uh, this paradigm, Sheikh, this whole potter, uh, postmodernistic idea of feminism, what it is doing, Sheikh, it is encouraging. It is shoving and pushing vehemently, vehemently. Uh, uh, women to be like men, to walk like men, to talk like men. Although you can counter argue and say, well, who identifies, who dictates what it is to be like a man or be like a woman? Now, our Sharia tells us, and you find this even in the Old Testament, it is an abomination. For women to imitate men, it's an abomination in the sight of Allah. And for men to imitate women, I mean, that's even, you know, that's beyond me. But anyways, uh, that's also an abomination in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, this movement is pushing so hard for us to completely eradicate and demolish any, any differences, whether they are biological differences or not. Islam says... We want women and men to be very different at the very basic rudimentary level. So, for example, in Salat, just in Salat, this is something very simple. It's a very subtle difference. But in Salat, when, when we correct the imam, the men in the back, they say what? Subhanallah. The women in the back, they don't say subhanallah, they clap. So Islam wants us to be different at every facet. But this movement is encouraging us to completely eradicate and dismiss these differences and to move on to a completely new Allah uh, Alam diabolical system. Uh, now to his question, who's who's greater in the sight of Allah? We are equal, Ya Sheikh. Uh, first, uh, first, Yusuf, uh, why this movement is appealing to some sisters? Very good. You remember earlier, Sheikh, I said that we have absolutely zero idea of what Islam is and what Islam isn't. Correct, correct yes. So, so, so when you, for example, come and you say, sister, you can only marry a Muslim man. She goes outside and non-Muslims are patting her on the back and saying, oh, who am I to judge? They shouldn't judge you. They should accept you. They don't understand your emotions and feelings. So she emotionally, emotionally, she is now more in tune and more keen to accepting their concept because it comes off as loving. It comes off as being peaceful, accepting and so forth. So she embraces that and she realizes slowly but surely all the doors with the non-Muslims are open in front of her, whereby in Islam, it's not the Imam saying this door is closed. It's Allah telling us that this door is closed for a woman. This is closed for a woman, this door, etc. So when she compares, she looks at this door instead of saying it's the wisdom of Allah that I cannot do ABC. She looks at herself and says, oh, Islam is depriving me. Islam is infringing on my rights and liberties. No, Islam is assuring your overall well-being. That's why Islam closed this door in your face. It's not because Islam doesn't want you to be free. So our understanding of Islam is zero, and our understanding of the dominant culture is hyper and ultra, and that's why we're having a problem appreciating Islam. Crystal, now, clear, beautiful. Beautiful way of putting it. May Allah reward you. I mean, I mean, Afwan, uh, I mean, what uh, Number three is why, who's better in the sight of Allah? We are equal in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of our, our spiritual worth. Men don't go to men because they're paradise, because they're men don't go to paradise because they're men. Women don't go to paradise because they're women. Allah says, Ya ayyuha nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu. The best of you in the sight of Allah are those who are the most conscientious of him. When women focus on their rights, we can if we're talking about rights, Sheikh, we have to talk about obligations. We have we have to they go hand in hand. The only way I can be the best in the sight of Allah is by knowing what my rights are, but that doesn't stop there. I also have to know what my obligations are towards others. Beautiful. Uh, Brother yeah. Yusuf, uh, uh, Jazakallah khair, but let me take that question from the last question here from Brother Abu Bakr, he's from Houston. Uh, what can one do if the women just take advantage of the man because he's just a nice in every aspect? And when he says no, she uh, just says you are cheap and so forth. What can a man do to handle a woman? Uh, 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 to hand, uh, what can the man do if the, his woman is abusing his uh, gentleness and niceness, um, not being, uh, you know, stern? Uh, 
you know, in a way, not balancing his manhood with uh, being nice or extra uh, lenient. Hopefully, you got I, I the gist of the question. Well, Laya, Sheikh, I feel like I have to literally put up a syllables together about how to be, uh, well, Laya, and I don't say this arrogantly, but there's a time for a man where you have to be passive and look the other way. For a man, sometimes you have to be stern. You have to be aggressive. Sometimes you have to put your foot down. Yes, in life, you're going to have to have that. You're going to have to play these roles. You have to know when it is a time for me to be aggressive. And sometimes when it's just for me to just smile and turn the other way as if nothing is going on. But it's balance in that. That's where it's healthy. Now, going back to his question is, this has to happen before marriage. Because... If, if you were like that for years on end, she's going to take advantage of it. And if you did not counter that with whatever means possible, it's only going to continue. And, and another thing here is it's, you know, when we're always talking about like I'll, I'll give you an example. Sheikh, if you were to do a YouTube search right now in English, a woman's obedience to her husband, you're going to find one video. You're going to find one video on all of YouTube out of billions of videos. You're going to find one video. OK, but. The Prophet Sallallahu he says, there's not a woman who prays her five. That a woman in Islam, if she prays her five, she fasts the month of Ramadan and she obeys her husband. Ta is obedience of the husband. I'm not going to change it to make you feel good. And if you dislike me because of it, I'm sorry. I'm not asking for you to dislike me. But ta in English means obedience. I, I, I can't play around the words. I can't play with linguistics or semantics, right? So the Prophet is saying that if you do these, Dear woman, you will be told on judgment day to enter in any paradise that you want. But here's the kicker, Ya Sheikh. Here's the caveat. The sister never heard such a hadith on the mimbar. Right, in a khutbah. Now you understand our problem, Ya Sheikh. Yeah, it's a yeah. deep problem. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. I mean, I agree. I. Uh... And Sheikh, I'll say this. There are abused men in relationship, but there are also abused women. But for us to think only, because the man, Ya Sheikh, if he goes and gets a divorce... Half of everything is gone. He finds himself out in the street. A lot of men, they don't, they, they want to, you know, try a different path, but living in these abusive situations, the woman is abusing the husband. There's also two sides to the story, I know, but we can't turn a blind eye and say, oh, only women are abused. I'm a, I got, I get calls here, Sheikh, and complaints from certain people who say, Sheikh, I, I don't, I can't get a divorce. I can't afford it. I want to see my kids, but my wife is not giving me my rights. That's abuse. That's abuse. That's abuse. She's pushing him to go commit adultery. And what does he do later on? Yeah, yeah this is not a joke. Marriage is not a joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brother Yusuf, uh, we're really grateful to you. Uh, we're over uh, three minutes over the time here. Uh, it's a very interesting conversation, quite frankly. Uh, and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for uh, bringing this subject up. And I think, I, I truly believe, you cannot imagine the amount of questions uh, which are unanswered uh, on the uh, chat and the comment section. And I apologize to the uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, uh, but ta'ala, we will, inshallah, inshallah, by the permission of Allah, uh, and, and we mean that, uh, uh, to uh, bring in Brother Yusuf again and address that subject of feminism uh, uh, towards the idea of, uh, you know, making our lives better. Uh, and uh, we can only do this if we uh, do what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Brother Yusuf, at the end, I want to say jazakallah khairan for taking the time. And please uh, keep working on the subject. Maybe we need these syllabus. Uh, please send me one because I'm, I'm having some issues myself. <laughs> so I get beaten up twice, one in the morning and one at night. So maybe you can help me out, inshallah. <laughs> Jazakallah khairan Yusuf. May Allah reward you and uh, may Allah uh, give you Jannah for your time. I mean. uh, brothers and sisters in Islam, in, uh, at the end of the broadcast, I want to thank uh, Brother Yusuf for his time and his efforts in, uh, in being here and, and addressing the subject of feminism. And inshallah, we'll try. بإذن الله تعالى to uh, uh, address the subject again. Uh, إن شاء الله next guest is going to be brother brother Gabriel Gabriel Romani, all the way from Malaysia. And ما شاء الله brother uh, Jibril uh, Romani uh, uh, has been uh, also one of the uh, speakers out there uh, who are trying to deal with these contemporary issues. Uh, you see, brothers and sisters in Islam. Uh, the sugar coating of the religion is very dangerous. Uh, we need to say it the way it is. Yeah, we need to be a little bit politic, political in, 
but we have to address it. We have to talk about it. This subject of tonight, feminism, is an issue in our homes. Um, uh, probably Brother Susi mentioned that a lot of divorces are taking place. A lot of homes are broken. A lot of hearts are broken because of this. And, and, and there are sisters who regret, uh, you know, breaking up their families uh, because she insisted uh, on uh, advancing uh, a feminism uh, agenda in her family uh, because she believes that this is how uh, it should be. Uh, not the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, wishes for her uh, to conduct her life. Uh, brothers and sisters in Islam, وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not reveal anything which can be a burden on you as a male or a burden on you as a female. You know when the burden happens? When you uh, start having burdens in your lives? When you abandon the rule, the duty, the responsibility Allah appointed to you and you want to take on another one. That's when you burden yourselves. You see, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never burden a soul more than what the soul can bear. Okay? Now, Allah revealed for the females what they can handle. Now, abandoning this and adopting a man-made ideology called ism, uh, this is the path to hardship. And this is where you end up uh, being unhappy in this world, depressed, sad. Because you're wearing something that is not your color. You're, you're eating something that is not your food. Uh, you understand? There is a, it does is not compatible to your fabric as a female. It's not compatible to your fabric as a male. And that's the whole idea, brothers and sisters in Islam. I love you all for the sake of Allah. And I look forward to uh, our uh, next Ask Imam Kareem live show uh, next Sunday, insha'Allah. Jazakumullahu khaira. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka atubu ilayk. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. قدت فؤادك الأيام فتا وتنحت جسمك الساعات نحتا وتدعوك المنون دعاء صدق ألا يا صاحي أنت أريد أنت أراك تحب عرسا ذات خدر أبت طلاقها الأكياس بتا تنام الدهر ويحك في غطيط بها حتى إذا مت انتبهتا فكم ذا أنت مخدوع وحتى متى لا ترعوي عنها وحتى أبا بكر دعوتك لو أجبت إلى ما فيه حظك لو عقلت إلى علم تكون به إماما مطاعا إن نهيت وإن أمرت ويجلو ما بعينك من غشاها ويهديك السبيل إذا ضللت